Okay, so you're trying to represent yourself and you're, you're, you're dealing with the courts, okay? This is not something that you, you want to do. This is something that you have to do. You would love to have an attorney, but for whatever reason, you can't get one. Either they, no one will take your case, and as possible, you could have the money to pay, but they, they won't take your case, or they won't take the case for the amount of money you have had to pay. Or you just didn't like the lawyers that you looked at, and it's like, I don't want to pay this guy to go in there with me because it's be worse than not having a lawyer. And that's completely true. It could be. I mean, usually you're better off even with a, a crappy lawyer than, and there's ways to deal with the lawyer that's not good. You can make them kind of do things they don't necessarily, you know are the right things to do, they don't think are the right things to do. You know? So how do you so how do you handle this lawyer that maybe maybe you, you you've hired them okay and you you're finding out this guy just either doesn't care or he's just incompetent or and it could be a woman too but they're just you know they took your money they're always showing up unprepared they show up late they don't advocate for you how do you change the circumstances you need to remember who's driving the, who's driving the boat here. Okay, or the bus. You're driving the bus. He works for you. Or they work for you. You can make them do things they don't want to do. Don't agree to things. Don't just say no. Because the court's on your side. They'll back your play. They'll force the issue. Tell the person what you want. A lot of times, the person will be a better attorney if you're just frank with them and say, look, this is what I want. And they go, well, I'll withdraw. Well, let them withdraw. You don't need them anyway. But in dealing with the, the, the courts, you're better off with a lawyer in there, even at one that sucks, if you can control them. If you can't control them, if you can't get them to do what you want, yes, you're better off without them. But if you've got one, you can make these people usually do what you want them to do, and they will be better off for it because there were times when I really disagreed with my client. I went and did what they told me to do because that's my duty if it's ethical and you know what they turn out to be right because they know this case better than any lawyers ever going to know it you know your case better than any lawyers ever going to know it so don't be afraid to push them don't be afraid to not agree to things that you don't want to agree to because if you let them talk you into something, you're going to not like. You're not going to be happy with it, and you know ultimately they'll be better off too. Even if they have to go do a trial, even if they have to do a trial they didn't get paid for. Because I'm a true believer that you get better results out of contested hearings than you ever do out of these agreements. These agreements suck. They always suck. Everybody always gets home and they regret them. So you got a lawyer, you pay the money, they show up and they turn completely turn into something other than what you paid for or what you thought you were paying for. What do you do? Well, if you've done your if you've done what you're supposed to do and you know your case and you understand what you want out of it, then hold out for what you want. If they don't come to you with what you want, don't negotiate. The best way to negotiate in family law is not to negotiate, even when you're negotiating. So you go to mediation. Do you want to be? Do you want to get into this? I'm going to trade you this. You trade me that with your kids? No. You know what you want. Hold out for that. Don't be intimidated by it. Don't let mediators tell you, oh, you, you know, this is you're not going to do that good in trial, or oh, this. Yeah, may, they may be right, but stick to your guns and don't negotiate. If you got to give up one little itty bitty thing. When you got the other 90% of, let's say 95% of what you want, yeah, that, okay, that's a business judgment that some people make. But if they're not even, they're not close to that, don't negotiate with them. Because it's a sign they're weak. It's a sign that, that they'll, they'll go the, if they've already offered you 80% of what you want, they will offer you all of it. All you got to do is just hold out. And don't get into, if the, if the mediator comes to you and says, look, they move, you have to reciprocate. No, you don't. I tell people in my firm, don't negotiate. The best negotiation is no negotiation. Hold out. Sit on things. 
make them negotiate against themselves. It is very humiliating to the other side for an offer to be rejected without any counteroffer. But sometimes you have to do that to somebody because, hey, you you just have high expectations. You know what you want, and you've established it, and you're going to go for it. And if you got to go to court, you're going to go to court and take a chance. See what the judge says. You know what? The judge is probably going to give you more than what you're negotiating for right now. So be conscious of that. Hold out. You're the tough guy. And if your lawyer's not doing what you want, and you can't get another lawyer, and make them do what you want. Tell them, look, this is what we agreed on yesterday or before the trial hearing. We're not changing it. Or I found this out. Or I found that out. That's what they're going to say. No, you listen to the other side. Stop listening to them. Listen to me. I was there. You weren't. So do what I paid you to do. Go in there and win my case. That's the attitude you should have. Okay? Now, when we're talking about this, let's say you, you don't have a lawyer. Let's forget about that part. But you don't have a lawyer, but you're going to have to go into court yourself. Does any of that apply? Yes. Don't be afraid of the court. Don't let people talk you into deals because you're, you're not represented. Hold out. De make them negotiate against themselves and negotiate the exact same way I told you to negotiate with a lawyer. In fact, it might be easier because you don't have this other person in there trying to tell you all their little war stories about how things turned out, which are all probably true, but you know what? Your case is different from theirs, I guarantee it. Or different from the cases they're talking about. So yeah, hold out. That's how you negotiate. Where does the law come from? It comes from very many places in family law. Family law is very eclectic in where they get the law. It comes from the family code, primarily. You should familiarize yourself with that. You should get the, the you should get the the, the uh, lawyer's workbook, the attorney's workbook I told you about. Okay, you should understand the law comes that the procedures come from the, the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure. You should know that too. And each court, each county has their own rules on when to show up and how they manage their dockets. Okay, how much time you're going to be given. These are all local rules. You should also know the common law. To some degree, that there's other, you know, there's generally the family code is a codification of what was once the common law. Okay, so it can differ very much, a little bit. But if you know, if you if you familiarize yourself with the with the Texas the family code, okay, Texas family code, if you're in Texas or the equivalent in any other state, and the rules of civil procedure, then you're a long ways down the road to helping yourself. Then you have the rules of evidence, the rules of civil evidence in Texas. Okay. These are um, important for you to know and understand. Okay, so keep those in mind. All right, and we would, and we will, we'll, um, and you'll be well on the road to going, getting where you need to be. Okay. Also, focus on the fact that you're that the lawyer works for you. Make him work for you. And also remember, the best way to negotiate is not to negotiate. Pick what you want, establish it, and then hold out for it. Because that's the answer. That's the legal. That's the that's the most ethical outcome. Because that's what's really in the best interest of the children, and that's what you firmly believe in. They can't they can't attack you on that. What's best for the children is not something that can be negotiated, and you know what's best for the children, or you don't. And people who are willing to give things up like that are typically people that don't really believe in anything. Okay? Don't negotiate with them. Don't negotiate like that. That's why the best negotiators are the negotiators that go and they figure out what was what would be the outcome of one of these cases. And they come to you and say, hey, you can take this now. This is my opinion. It may be different than yours. I don't want a horse trade. Take this now. I'll pay your lawyer forty thousand more dollars, and you're going to get this outcome in the courts. And they're probably right. But those are the best. Those are the best mediators that do that. The mediators of horse trade aren't worth, worth a damn, but you sometimes have to go through them. So understand that when they come to you, do what Domingo Garcia told told uh, one of the mediators I had one time. He was talking about Domingo Garcia told him this, and then he didn't tell me this directly. I want you to know that. But the mediator told me what he said. Been some paraphrasing what I heard secondhand, but I do believe it's true, and I've I've exercised it. 
that is you hold out for an outcome. You, you have an outcome in mind that you think is best and right and just and ethical. And you hold out for it. And you don't sell it out. Like it's like you're in the marketplace or something. It's not a carpet. It's not a horse. It's not a car. It's your kids. And you know what's best for them and you don't and you don't compromise on it. And if you need a judge to determine what that is, let a judge determine what it is. And try to find the mediators who are going to work the mediation by looking at what the court will do and then come back and give you their opinion on that and then you have a better way to manage it because you're talking about a professional opinion and you're not trading hours of the day or the month of the year and trying to come to some kind of outcome that's completely unworkable that you'll regret five minutes when you walk out of there. If you do those things if you understand where the law comes from, if you know how to manage a lawyer when you have one, even if it's not the best lawyer for you, okay, someone that you've had to hire because you just feel better with a lawyer in there than doing this on your own, and I understand that, you can get outcomes that are far better than what you would do if you if you don't understand what's going on and you don't and you go in there and you let the other sides lawyer tell you what's going on? Are you letting an ethical mediator tell you what's going on? Are you are you are afraid to go in front of a judge? Are you let your crappy lawyer tell you what to do? If you establish what you do, want to do, believe in that, and never compromise on it. Not only are you going to be the better parent and more fit to be the primary parent, your results will always exceed your expectations.